Today I'm going to show you all the steps you need to take to transform this flat table containing HR data and about 240,000 rows to a data model. So without any further ado, let's head over to Power Query. First step that we need to take is to create dimension tables and fact tables out of this flat file. Looking at the file, we want to create a dimension table for employees, one for company, one for department, one for position, one for the job title, and create a fact table for work hours and absences. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the quickest way you can achieve that. First, let's duplicate this table. Right click on the table, choose duplicate. We will rename this new table as Dimension Company. All we need to do now is select the company ID, the company name, right click and remove other columns. Once we've done that, we select both columns, right click and remove duplicates. This will ensure that we have a dimension table that we can use in the future to filter data that has only four rows containing the value and the code for it. Now using the same process, I'll create tables for every other dimension or fact table. Let me speed up the process a little bit because you don't want to watch the same thing over and over again. And this is the first step completed. We've created dimension tables for the company, for the department, for the position, job title, status, and the fact tables for work hours. Let's rename the first table to dimension employees. Second step would be to tidy up data. It would mean that we should have unique values on any IDs like the employee ID, the company ID and so on and we should try to avoid no data. One way of quickly seeing how your data is distributed is to go to the view tab and enable column quality, column distribution, column profile and then change the column profiling to be based on the entire data set. Now, let's start with the employees table. First of all, we created all the dimension tables and all the fact tables containing the information that we wanted. So there's absolutely no point in keeping columns like the company name, the department, the position and so on. All we need to keep is the ID because later on we will create a relationship between the company ID in the employees table and let's say the company ID in the dimension company table. So let's quickly remove the columns that are no longer necessary. Now like I said before we want a unique value in the employee ID table. So what we want to do now is remove the duplicates. By removing the duplicates, we're down from 240,000 rows to just 1,680 and all of them are unique. Now let's see if there are any empty values in any of the columns. The only empty values that we have are in the leave date because some of these employees are still active. Now because the leave date is a date type column, we cannot change the value with any kind of text or numbers. What we could do in this case is to replace the null value with a date. For example, I will choose a date that's outside of the model, which is 1st of the 1st, 1900. Later on, when I will do all the calculations, I will exclude all the rows that contain this date in any of the calculations that I want to do. Now let's move on to the company table. And as we can see, we have only unique values. So we're good. We need to move to the next one. In the department ID table, we should have unique values, but as you can see, we have 89 distinct and 78 unique, which means that in the department name, there are different values that use the same department ID. One way to look at it, it's in the value distribution on the bottom, and as you can see, HR appears three times. Now let's sort the department ID code ascending and see why this is happening. Now the HR ID is used for all three departments in different companies. What we could do in this case is to replace the HR department ID for each of these three instances. A quick way of replacing multiple values is to use an M code. Press on FX and let's write the code. It starts with table replace value. For the list of values we will have the previous step and then we want to replace 
each row in the department ID and we will replace it using the if and else formula. So each row if and we need to set up two conditions. The first one is for department ID to be HR and the second one would be for the department name to be FH people and culture. Make sure you have the same case because otherwise the formula won't work. Then replace with HR FH. If this condition is not met, we need to move to the next condition. So else, and we will copy the condition from here, paste it and replace FH with FM. And if this condition is not met, then else and copy paste it again and replace FH with FE. And if this condition is not met, then else replace with department ID, which is the initial value. X comma, replace, uh, replace text. We need to put the column name again, which is department ID. Make sure all the parentheses are closed and press enter. Now, as you can see, two of the values have been changed and one stayed the same. Let's check the code. This would be for the HRFM. As you can see, exactly as I said before, if you don't have the exact value and exact case, the formula won't work. So let's change this FH people in culture to FM people in culture. Press enter and it's changed. If we look at the column value distribution, we can see that we have multiple IDs in the same situation. So again, let me quickly change those for you and I'll be back in a second. All that is left for me now is to move the remove duplicate step after the custom one step. And there we have it, 99 distinct and unique values. Moving on to position table, let's check all the data over here. It looks like we have one duplicate value, CG. Let's sort the columns and let's see why we have this problem. Again, something that can be very quickly sorted. And again, everything is unique. Let's move to the job title ID and see if we need to make any changes here as well. Oh, luckily over here, all IDs are unique values. Let's move to status. Now to status, you'll notice we only have the code. Why not add a description as well? A very quick and easy way to do it is add a column, column from examples. And where it says L, we can say left. And where it says A, we can say active. Press OK and this will create your column. Let's see how this would look in a different scenario. Let's say we didn't remove the duplicates earlier. Let's remove this step right here. Yes, I'm certain we want to delete. See, wherever we have L, it says left and where we have A, it says active. Now, of course, we don't want to keep the duplicates, so we will remove duplicates. And the final table is the fact work hours. First of all, we want to replace the null value in the minutes absence and day absence, and we will replace them with zero. So select both columns, replace values, replace null with zero. Of course, we need to replace it in the hours work as well. So select the step and all you need to do is insert a new column. This would be hours work. This way we can keep one step for the replacement of values. Now in the process date, we will use the same principle that we used with the leave date from the dimension employees. So we will choose replace values. We will replace null with first of the first 1900. Remember, you will have to exclude this day from any calculation you will do in your report later. Now this index number, I know it's an index number of absences that occur in consecutive days. This is very useful when you're trying to create the Bradford report. Of course, we will replace the value no with zero as well. So why not add it to this step right here? But again, in the future, when you create the Bradford report, you need to remember to exclude value zero from count. And this is the conclusion of step number two. All we need to do now is hit close and apply and all the transformations will be applied to the tables in Power BI. The next step from here is to create the relationships. In my previous video about how to select your data model, I've explained how relationship work. What I did not explain in the previous video is how to create the relationships. So there are a couple of ways. First, let's drag our fact table in the middle so we can work easier and see all the tables. Next, let's drag the employee table next to it. The quickest way is click, drag and drop. So click on the employee ID in the employees table 
drag it on the employee ID in the fact hours table and that's how your relationship is created. A second way to do it is go to manage relationships, click new, select your first table which is company, select your second tables which is employee and we will do the connection based on the company ID. Click close and there you have it, a new relationship. But of course the quickest way to do it end of the day is click drag and drop. As you can see, it took me the whole nine seconds. Let's arrange the tables a bit so they look a bit nicer and we can see the relationships exactly as we set them up. And there we have it. This is the model that we've created starting from a flat file. Now, of course, you can start from an access database like I did in this video, for example, or you can start from different other databases. The principles are still the same. All that's left for you to do now is start building your report and you can see in this video what I could create without using any measures. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, subscribing and even hitting the notification bell. I'm Stelian, signing off. Until next time, cheerio!